Hello and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Today is sock day. Um, I've never done a video about socks, but I became a sock knitter during COVID after saying to everyone many times that I would never knit socks. I had knit a couple of pairs and I don't know, I didn't think it was satisfying. I always thought they're just gonna get wrecked because you're gonna walk around on them all day. And then I started spending all of my time indoors because of COVID. March 2020. So I started knitting socks and learned the value of them. Um, and yeah, now I just can't really stop. <laughs> Knit a lot of socks in the past year and a half. Um, one of the reasons is that I spend a lot of time dyeing yarn um, when I'm home in the summers. And so this is my shirt, Crescent Dye Works. Crescent Dye Works is my label. Um, I don't really, I tried to do Etsy and I really wasn't like, I didn't really have, um, like a fan base or like, uh, other than like Instagram and I didn't sell anything through Etsy. So I just, um, decided to partner with my local yarn store in Shelburne, Vermont called must love yarn and must love yarn is my exclusive retailer. Um, I don't think it's online though, because all the stuff that I, um, sell there, it's like, I sell it on consignment. So um, must love yarn. I just give them all the yarn that I have that I want them to sell and they take some of the money from it, not very much, and then I get the rest and they're super nice. I love them. The two women who manage the store, Pam and Andrea, are super great and um, they're awesome. Even when I wear a mask, they know exactly who I am when I'm walking into the store, even though I don't really live here very much in Vermont. I'm just kind of here like in the summers and just like around. Anyway, Crescent Dye Works. Um, it's called Crescent Dye Works because I live on Crescent Road and my friend Erin, one of my very best friends, is a great artist. Um, you can follow her on Instagram. She's Skadoodler. Her name before she got married, her last name was Skelly. So her Instagram Skadoodler and I will link that because it's hilarious. She draws really cute cartoons. So she drew, did a crescent moon with, and then she drew the two yarn skeins in, in the moon. She, she like, you know, shaded them and it was like pretty. I have a little stamp, but the stamp doesn't come out that great because the yarn is really detailed. Um, anyway, I love, I love the logo. Um, and she has one of these t-shirts too, uh, because she made the logo. Um, I have another one that's tie-dyed, but it's really hard to see it because uh, this part is like all yellow, but it's like kind of busy, especially if I'm gonna record about yarn. Okay. So this is already three minutes long and I haven't even shown you any socks. Okay, so uh, I have a big problem with like not knitting the second of something like a sock or a sleeve or a mitten or whatever it is that needs to. Um, and I try to be pretty good about my socks. Um, like I try not to just make one and then just forget about it. Um, but it's been piling up. And so I'm calling this month second sock September. So I have five socks to finish. One of them's already done. So this is the first one that I needed to do. My friend, uh, a friend of mine, she might watch this. I think she knows that these are for her because she saw me making them. My friend Lila, she loves purple. This is a scrappy pair of socks. I have a lot of sock scraps and I'll talk about what else I use sock scraps for at the end. But I started these like, I don't know, in March. I made the first one in like March and April. I love, I, it's, it's seven different purples um, and then the gray and I'm not going to tell you it. I mean, I guess I could tell you most of them are hand dyed. Gray's hand dyed. This first purple strip's hand dyed. The second one is kind of like Moby purple. That's Yak Sock from the Farmer's Daughter Fibers Club. This one's hand dyed. This one's hand dyed. This one's hand dyed. This one is the 80-20 sock from the Farmer's Daughter Fibers and then this one is Malabrigo Sock in African Violet. Um, so yeah, that's not even all the purples I have. Uh, and these, because these are scrappy, yeah, you can see the, the jog of the stripe in this one. Um, but I did, I did them so that like, this is the outside, no jogs. This is the outside, no jogs. So she can wear them without, with the jogs facing inwards. Unfortunately, I only have one pair of sock blockers, so you're not gonna see any of the other ones on a blocker. Um, okay, so this was the first one I had to finish. I'm really excited about these as long as the ends don't come out because good lord there were a lot of ends um here's the next one this one is well this is the first one and it's done and this is the second one 
These are the Scribbly Gum Socks by Helen Stewart. This was just the last pattern in this year's Handmade Sock Society. Scribbly Gum Socks are super cute. There's like a little texture pattern. I'll put it on my hand so you can see what the lace looks like. It's like a lace texture pattern. It's supposed to look like a plant. The theme of this one was like outdoor wilderness. Um, you'll see another one from this series um, also based on a plant. This is with Ancient Arts yarn um, from Canada. And I can't remember what the color is. It's like lichen, lichen something. The tag's not that far away, but I didn't get it. Um, I'll put it in the show notes. So there's Twisted Rip Cuff and, um, and then just a standard heel flap and gusset. I do a slip stitch heel, round toe. Uh, the, the, this is interesting because the yarn is wool and nettle fiber. So it's like 60 something percent wool and then like 30 something percent nettle, which is really soft. It's a little heavier weight than uh, some sock yarns. It's like a heavy sock yarn, more like an 80-20 base, um, if you are familiar with sock yarns. Yeah. Very nuanced. Anyway, this is what the ball looks like. So there's some speckles and other colors in it. Again, not good lighting here, but kind of like a gray base with like, there you go, you can kind of see. Some of the pops are kind of neon. It's fun. So that's just one. That's actually on needles. The other one that's actively on needles right now is um, Honey Bee Dance Socks, also by Helen Stewart. This is from the Handmade Sock Society season one. So I made the first one in January. And this yarn is Madeline Tosh Sock, which is 100% merino. And I find this yarn really hard on my hands. So that's why I didn't knit the second one. Um, but my mom is a beekeeper. Um, the hive is right outside. She keeps bees and she loves bees. Um, and so this is the present for her birthday, which is like next week. So I have to finish. Luckily, I will not release this video until after her birthday when I have given her these socks. So this one, again, because the yarn's hard on my hands, I really have to take it slow. I'm just doing 24 rounds a day, so two B repeats. I have two more days left, not too bad. This, yeah, I don't know what the color is. It's like liquid gold or pollen or something. Um, now that Jimmy Bean's owns model and Tosh, everything is kind of different. So I bought this before, before that happened a few years ago. Um, but anyway, this is an active whip. Those two are more active. And then I have two more. That's it for the in progress ones. This is another one from the Handmade Sock Society season four. These are the Spin Effects socks. So because I, I think it's because I knit through the back loops, the Spin Effects little pattern is kind of hard to see, but there's this like spiky little stitch there. That's kind of a good lighting for it. Yeah, it's kind of like hedgerows. Um, and this yarn is, so this is a toe-up sock. I don't usually do those, and it came out a little big. So these are gonna be for my friend Anne. Anne is knitworthy. She lives in England where she needs wool socks. Um, so these are for her, her feet are a little bigger than mine, and she likes green. Um, this is a farmer's daughter um, sock squad in the yak base, that yak, I think that's what it's called. This is from August. I think the color name is Cool as a Cucumber. Um, Farmer Starter Sock Squad, which I will talk about in a minute when I'm done with whips. Um, it comes every month and there's three different bases and they always come with a mini. And so the mini for this one was like a light brown. I think it was undyed yak yarn. Um, I have dyed yak yarn before, as I will show you. And um, it is, uh, it's, it comes like kind of light brown. And then, so it, the colors are beautiful, like over dyed colors on, on this like a light brown base. So, but I chose not to use the mini. I'm gonna use it with, again, I've dyed yak yarn before. And so I spent actually this, this past summer, I dyed yak yarn. Um, I dyed like five sock quantities, um, skeins. And I have a dark brown, so I'm gonna use the light brown for that. This is my last whip. This is the Petty Harbor Socks. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. It's a great pattern. It's a lot like the Hermione's Everyday Socks. Also something you're gonna see in a minute in this video. Hermione's Everyday Socks are the most popular pattern or most most knit pattern on all of Ravelry. Um, and so this is kind of like that. It's, um, it's like knit one round, knit three purl one, 
next round, knit one round, and then knit one purl one. So it's also kind of like hedgerows, but it's textured, it's gorgeous. Um, yeah, and this is a uh, Exmoor sock. This is from the Wooly Thistles sock bag from the summer in Boulder and Clouds. It's kind of a grayish, it's like vaguely blue-ish, but yeah, it's, I didn't want to do something um, too crazy with it. I think the yarn itself is really beautiful. It's very wooly. There is nylon in it, but, um, and it's super wash treated, but it's still pretty wooly. So John Arbin makes beautiful yarn, beautiful colors. It's all dyed in the wool. So nice. There's a combination of um, Exmoor Blueface, Corydale, and Sort Blaze in this, plus 10% nylon. The, the shades of yarn are all North Devon inspired. If you don't know where Devon is, it's on the coast of England. Um, kind of like below Wales, like the southwestern part near Cornwall. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so those are my four whips. I have one done. Yeah, this is a man's sock. So actually this was like, I don't knit socks for men that often, but that, um, it doesn't actually take much longer. This one was a whole project because I actually tried, this is the third sock. Like I ripped the first two out um, because I had a twisted ripped cuff. And um, so I think I've said in other videos, but maybe they're not up. Twisted rib is dangerous because it pulls really, really tight. Um, and it's actually hard to get your foot in. So this one, and then I overcompensated and cast on 72 stitches and was like, no, that's actually too big for me. So that's gotta be for a man, which it is. It's gray. Okay, so those are my like whips right now. I'm trying to get through all of them as fast as I can, hopefully by the end of September because I wanna keep knitting more socks. Um, but these are some recent FOs that I'm pretty excited about. So this is another yak sock. And it looks black, but it's just really deep midnight blue. I put too much dye in the pot. Oops. Um, and then the um, this is Hermione's Everyday Socks. Again, oh, there you go. Now you can see the pattern. So Hermione's Everyday Socks, once again, the most knit pattern on all of Ravelry. There's like 34,000 pairs logged in Ravelry. Two by two ribbed cuff. This is, an, uh, the again, in the knit sock squad. Bomber's Daughter's Fibers. This one was from February. And I knit a pair of socks in this color, but I had some left. So heels, toes, and cuffs. These are for a family friend who recently moved. And I really miss her and her dog. Well, oh, there's two of them. So both of the hers. <laughs> and their dog, also a her. <laughs> and they're awesome. And I had them both socks, but this is just one of the pairs of socks that I knit for them. Unfortunately, the dog can't wear socks. Hobbs is really sad because that dog was his best friend. I can't say her name because he'll freak out. But she's great. Um, okay, so that was a summer project. One of my favorite, these are all my favorite pairs of socks from the summer. I knit a bunch of socks in like July, I think. It was, yeah, it was July. I knit like four pairs of socks in July. This is one of the, maybe I did these in June. These are um, the Broken Rope Socks by Summerlee Knits um, from the Hello Sailor sock set. Summerlee's sock sets are awesome. They Usually there's like three patterns in them. It's not, they're not expensive. And sometimes there are variations on the same socks, but these ones were all really different. So there's like the Scattered Pearls sock, which has the Afterthought heel. And it's kind of like Hermione's Everyday Socks. Like there's just some pearl bumps scattered within stockinette, gorgeous. And it has a beautiful, really long ribbed cuff and a contrasting color. Broken Rope Socks came in two different um, weights, DK and fingering. So these are just fingering weight. Um, and you can either do stripes all the way, which is what I did, or you can just do like gym sock stripes at the top, which are really cute too. So I'm planning on doing some of those because I loved this pattern. This is another kind of hedgerow pattern where a lot of the rounds are just plain knitting. If I did these again though, I would do a real cuff with only one color and I would rib every round instead of like kind of like every other round here. Um, the yarn here that I used is the Garthenor Snowdonia sock um, that I got in my Wooly Thistle sock bag. Love that sock bag. Uh, if you didn't get one, they'll probably do something like that again next year before the sock sprint and you should get one then. Uh, it was actually a really good deal. Um, you save like it's less money to buy all of them than it would have been if you buy them individually. And you got a really cute bag and a pin and a stitch marker. 
and a pattern suggestion sheet. And the pattern suggestion sheet was great because they had two patterns for every pair of socks, one that was for sale on Ravelry and one that was free on Ravelry. So this is not was not one of the suggestions. Neither was the Petty Harbor socks, but again, great pattern, two great patterns. And this, uh, the main yarn here, the Snowdonia is marled. It's like a dark Hebridean, um, marled with kind of like a lighter kind of brownish gray, which is actually pretty hard to see because this contrasting color, which is Shibui Sock from my mom's deep stash, which is kind of like a mushroomy color, like a light truffle beige, like warm beige, um, gorgeous. Shibui Sock is so soft and it's really easy to work with and beautiful. Um, it was 100% merino base. Um, these actually I thought really went together and I absolutely love the effect. Oh, there's Hobbs skulking around the house looking for snacks. So I loved these, loved the pattern, loved the yarn, anything with stripes, I'll say it. Now I've said it before, I'll say it again. Anything with stripes goes really fast even if it's vanilla or vanilla-ish because you just want to keep going. And I will say, um, for the record, I almost always make socks with 64 stitches, standard heel flop and gusset with slip stitch heel. I've done an afterthought heel. It pulls too much. I don't like it. I like the idea of an afterthought heel, but it's too tight. It, I don't like the look of the sock. It's really smart to do an afterthought heel because it's super easy to repair, but yeah, I've done it a few times and the socks just don't hold up as well. I'm hard on my socks, even in bare feet. I walk. I, I don't walk. I pound the ground <laughs> hard with my feet. <laughs> um, okay, one more pair of socks that I did this summer that I love. This was also from the Farmer's Daughters Sock Squad. These are the Ambient Socks by Helen Stewart from the Handmade Sock Society Season 3. Um, I loved this um, this set. So this was uh, the mini, uh, 20 gram mini and 100 gram full skein. I think it was called Summer Sorbet. And it's so fun. There's a green and yellow and pink on this white kind of creamy yellowy white base. And so this is a fun sock because the front is this fun lace pattern. And the back actually has this interesting texture with knits and pearls. And oh, I love that orange. It's just so fun. I think these are gonna be nice to wear in the winter when I'm disappointed that it's really cold. Although I am never disappointed that it's really cold. I love cold weather. Um, standard round heel or a uh, toe and gusset, heel flap and gusset. Again, love these. Um, 80-20 is my favorite base. I have 75-25 yarns. I have 100% wool. I have 10% nylon, 90% wool. 80-20 is the best. I've never actually knit socks with cashmere with the 20% cashmere or 10% or however much they have. I have some cashmere sock yarns, some uh, merino cashmere nylon, but I haven't used them yet. I'm sure I'll love those too. Um, okay, so next up, um, I made a pair of self-striping socks like, I don't know, three weeks ago. I made them super fast. I made them with drops yarn. I think it's Fable is the self-striping sock yarn that they have. Took about just over maybe like a ball and a quarter. So this is the remainder of the second ball. They were in blue and white. I got them. I got this yarn in Canada. I went to Quebec um, with my family to see some family friends uh, in middle of August and I got it there in a yarn store in Lenoxville. It's really inexpensive and I love self-striping yarn and so I got it because my friend Molly, one of my oldest friends, probably doesn't watch this, but that's okay. She's a wonderful person. Um, she just moved apartments and she's living in town here um, on Church Street, which is so cool. I don't know, probably most people who watch this are not from Vermont and maybe have never been to Vermont, um, but Church Street is like this really cool pedestrian mall in Burlington. It's so cool. And Molly lives on Church Street above the chocolate store. So anyway, for a housewarming present, she wanted blue. Well. She saw me knitting socks and was like, I want those. And I was like, Molly's really knitworthy. She's like, so knitworthy. I can't even like, she loves like hand knit stuff. And she's just like a real Vermonter. Like she's like a millionth generation Vermonter. Yeah, her like her parents are both from Vermont and they're awesome. Anyway, 
I made Molly these self-striping socks, which I don't have because I gave them to her and she loves them. But her mom saw them and was like, I love those. And so now I'm making her a pair. Um, Patton's Croy socks. Uh, and there it is. That was upside down. Patton's Croy socks. This you can get at Michael's. I got this here at Michael's. I got two of them. And they're kind of Lori likes blues and teals and greens. And this one's got black in it too. And it's not very expensive. And it's this is like one of the only actual wool yarns you can buy at Michael's. Um, it's 75.25. It's a little heavier. It's more of a sport. I might knit these 56 stitches on a one and a half US 1.5 needle. I knit my socks on a US 1 Chiaogu red lace 40 inch cable. Some people knit with a 32 inch cable. Maybe I, I should do that because sometimes 40 is just like gets in the way. It hits you in the chest and it's like, what is tickling the like my like body here? And it's just that damn cord. Um, but yeah, I use the Chowgu red lace. And the I like the Chowgu because I use magic loop and the cables don't have any memory. Okay, so Patton's Croy socks. And this color is called turquoise stripes. It was hard to choose. Um, I like wanted to buy all the yarns that they had at Michael's in Patton's Croy, but I didn't because I have enough and it's not very expensive. These are like $6 a ball. You could get a pair of shorties out of this easily. I don't really knit shorty socks, but I could. Um, mostly because in Vermont, if you're wearing wool socks, it's because it's really cold. <laughs> so you need them to be long. And often we just wear them in the house. Like I could wear them with blundstones and they would be cute or like bean boots and they'd be cute, but they'd wear out faster. Although the nylon content helps. And I'm, gotten pretty used to picking up the stitches along the side of the heel and twisting them properly so that there's no holes and you can repair that it's not that bad okay um I'm also gonna make a pair of sparks sparks socks by Andrea Mowry I've had this spin cycle for so long this is spin cycle dyed in the wool and sunset strip I bought three colors of dyed in the wool two years ago yeah two years ago when I was knitting my mom's new leaf sweater um, and if you've never seen New Leaf by Jennifer Steingast, it's beautiful. And she used dyed in the wool. And I was making my mom's in like a white, like a fawn color. So I got these two kind of like blues, like one was like blue and purple is Melancholia, which is my favorite spin cycle color. And the other one was Deep Bump, which was the original color. And she chose that one. Maybe it was Cataclysm. I can't remember. It was either Cataclysm or Deep Bump. Uh, really nice. Um, and then I got a third one. I let her choose those and I still have the melancholy. I'm going to knit myself a sweater with that at some point with like a yoke. Maybe the Icefall by Tin Can Knits. That's so gorgeous. And what their kids sample of Icefall that they made for Strange Brew actually uses Melancholia Spin Cycle. Anyway, so this I'd gotten for a sweater, like a yoke sweater that was like brown, but it was just like too much with the brown. I didn't like it. It looked weird. I don't know. This is Color Sunset Strip. I don't know if I said that and it's you, it's hard to see because it's all wound up, but like inside, this is, it's basically a, um, what do you call it? Like a gradual, it's like a fade, but it's, it mimics hand spun. Spin cycle is amazing. And dyed in the wool is like fingering, heavy fingering weight, sport weight. And then um, dream state is like the worsted, like DK version. Um, so I, this I've dyed and for some reason, this is a 50 gram skein and I only dyed one, which was silly. I think I dyed a 20 gram mini though. So I could get a full pair of socks out of this, but this is all you need for the spark socks by Andrea Mowry, which is a color work socks to go with her spark, sparky cardigan. I'm going to show you a picture. I'm going to show you the Ravelry page. Andrea Mowry is a really thoughtful designer and she's super popular, but I think it's really well deserved. Her patterns are very thorough gorgeous and she i don't know if you guys know that she has a youtube series it's kind of newish it's called i'll knit if i want to and it started off as just a q a for her knit along and then it it turned into like her doing it every week and she's so nice and i'm like i just totally love her so there's those socks and she does a lot of partnering with spin cycle um and rightly you know so her patterns are with spin cycle really work and magpie fibers a lot with magpie um magpie fibers is from frederick maryland which is one of the greatest places on earth it's just it's a lot like burlington they have a lot of breweries a lot of places to eat that aren't chains it's one of my favorite places in maryland and they have magpie fibers which now has a storefront and that's new i went like right after it opened in like the first couple weeks and it was like uh, it was really hard not to buy all the yarn but i 
Magpie Fibers is really expensive. Okay. I also want to make like pumpkin spice kind of socks with this is the September sock squad from former daughters. Oh, this is coming undone. So now you can see it comes with a full skein and a mini. This one's called Highwood sock, 80% superwash, 20% nylon, 400 yards for the 100 gram skein, which is exactly the base that I dye my sock yarns on. That's probably probably get it from the same supplier. Um, it's a great supplier. But this one's called Fantastic Mr. Fox, September sock squad, 2021. So it's very fun. There's some oranges, some browns, it's like pumpkin spice. I feel like such a basic gal when I, that I love pumpkin spice so much, but I do, I really like it. Um, this is another example of a sock squad. Um, this was from July, it's called Eager Verbena. This is a 75-25 base. So this one, Pinelter sock. I don't know what that is, Pinelter, P-I-N-L-T-E-R. It seems like a, I don't maybe it's in a different language. Um, anyway, this is, it has some like berry speckles in it too, but it's mostly just kind of like washed with these like beautiful royal purple speckles with the pink mini. Um, this is called Eager Verbena. This one's 75, 25, four ply, 463 yards per 100 grams. And then this one's 92 yards. Um, sometimes I use the minis and sometimes I don't. Um, depends on, like one time I used the mini and I regretted it because the, um, the main yarn was this color of purple with the, like the super variegated one here. Um, it was in March and it, the mini was like a mustard yellow and they were cool together. Like I've, you can see other people's projects on Ravelry if you search the yarns and some of them were really pretty and mine was just like really ugly. Like it, I didn't use it them well together and it looked stupid. Um, but yeah, I think the 75, 25 base is nice too. It, you can get, you, there's a lot more yardage on it. You can often get two pairs of socks if you are using a mini for your heels, toes, and cuffs. So I love this color. Um, had some plans for it, but then I kind of changed my mind. So I don't know what I'm going to make with it yet. This is, I have been pretty good at keeping up. I kept up for the first six months and then this was July and I didn't knit because I had so many socks that I was working on from the, Wooly Thistle sock bag. That was my downfall, the Wooly Thistle. I mean, in a good way. Um, but then, yeah, I got August. I got halfway through the August yarn. <laughs> the Spinifex socks. I love that yak base. I loved it so much that I bought it. Um, okay, so my favorite base, as I said, is 80-20. Um, and when I'm making socks, I love anything that's easy enough not to be boring, but easy enough to memorize. So... Helen Stewart's Handmade Sock Society patterns are, for me, a very comfortable knitter. They're easy to memorize. Sometimes I don't memorize them because they're a little too hard, but they're very intuitive. Like if you kind of understand where the lace, most of them are lace, uh, is going, you'll understand, and you know how many rounds are in the whole repeat, you'll kind of get it. Um, so yeah, I've, I've mostly been able to do that, but I've, in the past, like, few months, I've really come to appreciate the simple patterns, like Patty Harbor. Again, there's a ton of these projects on Ravelry, which is just a simple texture. Oh my gosh, the broken rope. Love the broken rope socks. I might make that. Broken rope socks with this. And Hermione's every day. And I have really fallen in love with these because I do have a lot of yarns and I think we all do a lot of sock yarns that are a darker color and you could do lace and you could do cables and texture and stuff but you know fancy patterns unless they're lace and you can really see them like in there on your leg they won't come out in a dark yarn and so I've got an example here this is a very variegated and dark yarn this is called Queen City on Lydia Sock from Rove Yarn Co. Rove Yarn Co. I found out about it because someone that I um I work with at this um, this summer kind of course thing that I do um, for teenage girls who like to sing church music in um, New York City. Sorry, I like never talk about my professional life on this. Um, before I was a nanny, I was a graduate student in music, musicology, music history. Um, I was teaching uh, undergrads. I was a uh, worked in residence life. I was a dorm, 
like dorm mom. I was a graduate RA, but it's definitely like a dorm mom because I was older. Um, and my topic of study is girls singing English church music. Um, so I wrote a whole master's thesis on that. I didn't write a doctoral thesis. Uh, number one, COVID would have gotten in the way. I uh, also didn't really want to do research um, for my job. The job market's bad. I don't really like writing that much. So master's thesis was great, um, but there would have been a lot of a lot more baggage to do a doctoral dissertation on why there's still not as many girls as boys singing church music in England. Um, and I grew up singing in the Episcopal Church, which is um, basically the same like English choral music style in America. And um, so I work at the summer course uh, at a boys choir school in New York City, the only choir school. Uh, well, the only Episcopal choir school, residential Episcopal choir school in the country right now. It's only for boys. I would love to start one for girls. Um, since I was a teenager, I wanted to start a choir school for girls because there shouldn't be one for boys and not one for girls. Um, and in England, they're, they're slowly kind of trying to change the culture. And uh, my thesis was about two women in particular who are doing amazing work, but also bad things about it. And it was kind of sad. Um, Anyway, long story short, long story long, someone I work with at the girls course in the summer, two women, both women, both of the, like the, there's three of us and we're kind of like the three main people who run it. Um, they're both from Staunton, Virginia, and they're amazing. Their names are Jen and Kristen, and I don't think they watch this, um, but Kristen definitely knits. And Kristen connected me to, uh, or she pointed me to this dyer, Rove Yarnco from her town, and she's friends with her. And they had, I think it was flooding last year um, in Staunton and and they kind of needed a lot of like relief money and it was really difficult for them. So this woman um, who runs Rove Yarn Co, and I don't remember what her name is. I do follow her on Instagram. She did like an initiative where she dyed this special color called Queen City based on her town. And a bunch of the proceeds from the sales of this yarn went to the relief efforts. And so my friend Kristen showed me this thing and I was like I better get one and I love this color and but it's a anyway sorry that was a really long story um that's kind of my thing though I tell long stories and so it's like beautiful it's teal and purple and blue and it's so beautiful and black oh my gosh it's so nice um and I've been like trying to think of what to knit with it all year because I got it a whole year ago and it's just like it's too, you know, it's too variegated and dark to have like a fancy lace pattern on it or something because it would get lost. And so now that I've come to appreciate all these beautiful, simple textured socks, Hermione's every day, the broken rope socks, um, the Petty Harbor socks, there's more. If you have more, drop them in the comments, especially if they're free. Um, I'm going to make a, try and make like a, um, a resource of free sock patterns, um, at some point, maybe on my blog. Um, maybe that's one of the things we'll do with the Woolly Thistle. I, I'm doing guest writing for the Woolly Thistle. I and mean, that would be really fun because they have lots of sock yarn that you could do like paired sock yarn with, um, you know, with patterns, um, pattern libraries. Okay, so that's that. Um, I also love, so I love variegated yarn. This is a variegated yarn from Hand, Hand and Heart farm in Charlotte, Vermont, which is an off-grid farm. This is, I think, 90% wool and 10% nylon. It's, there is nylon in it. It's, it's not super wash and it's, you can see that it's like really wooly. It has a halo and it's so fun and variegated and I love this. Um, and so I just wanted to show that like a yarn that I will be knitting with this fall and I'll show you the socks when they're done. Um, but again, I got really into self-striping. And I don't have the self-striping socks that I just made for Molly. And I have made self-striping socks before um, with West Yorkshire Spinner's yarn. I made some Christmas ones last year for my mom. But like self-striping is kind of like this, like even stripes all the way down. Usually I would use a different color for heels, toes, and cups, but not always. So I showed you the Patton's Croy. Croy socks. And this comes in like kind of like marled, like almost like spin cycle as well. like more marled and color changing, gorgeous. Okay, but I, 
I don't like knitting vanilla socks most of the time because I find it really boring unless I'm knitting with self-striping. And some people have like patterns that they like to knit with self-striping. Um, if you do, drop them in the comments because I want to try it. Um, and I would consider doing these check textured socks in self-striping um, or just like the sprocket style socks where you like slip the first stitch of the new every throughout the row in the new color. So there's like this little sprocket like every other stitch if you have no idea what I'm talking about. At some point I'll make some so you can see. I might do that with like this. This is West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4 Ply in Blue Lagoon, which was one of the summer, which was one of the seasonal colors. And uh, it's 75% wool, 25% nylon, 437 yards and 100 grams. And you can often get solids to go with this for heels, toes, and cuffs. Um, this is from the Wooly Thistles sock bag as well. The mystery sock bag. It was so fun to get that. I love mysteries and fun grab bag type things. It's, it's awesome. It says perfect for socks. It is. You can also make like a little baby sweater in it or something. Self-striping yarn is, is fun and interesting. And you, there's a whole books that show you what to do. You can make sleeves, whatever you want. Um, and then I recently got this Woolens and Nosh. Um, what's it called? It's just like the keep it simple sock set. So there's only three colors. Um, this is called Mermaid Hair Don't Care. So you got um, 100 grams Targi, 90% Targi, 10% nylon base, and then 20 grams. Um, and this I got from India Untangled, whatever that's called. It's called um, it's called something else now. My neighbor got me a gift certificate um, to them, which is really nice. They're really close family friends. And um, 411 yards and 100 grams. I recently found out, like when I subscribed to her newsletter, that this is Woolens and Nash is in Thetford, Vermont. I didn't know she was in Vermont, which is also where I am. So that was really exciting. Um, and so it makes me like feel even better. I'm like, I love, I love anything local to me. Um, and I love Vermont. And I respect anyone who can dye self-striping because I know how they do it and I would never try it because I would mess up everything and spill dye everywhere and it would be a big mess. So that's just me. Um, so often like you end up with a bunch of scraps from a sock yarn or from a sock and you get a big huge bag of scraps from sock yarn. And so lots of people do this. I am one of those people. This is actually recently I started this, um, obviously because it's tiny. This is a mitered square blanket. And I'll link my mitered square blanket recipe in the show notes because I can't remember what it's called, but it's free online. You can use really any weight of yarn you want with any stitch count you want. Um, these are just symmetrical squares. You get like, I do 32 stitches total, 16 marker, 16. You're either picking up stitches along the edges where you're casting on 16 and then picking up 16 or picking up 16 and then casting on 16, whatever it is. Um, and then you do these double decreases down the middle and it's very neat. Even though like these are different yarn weights which you can kind of see because it's not always even on the edges. Um, nobody's looks even on the edges. All sock yarns are different. I mean, most of them are. So, and I love, it's like, some people call it cozy memories. Like I can tell you where all of these came from. Like that was my shell cottage socks. That is the singles that I dyed. Um, that's in the sea glass tee that I made. That's Malabrigo sock that I made a pair of socks for one of my organist friends. That is Shibui sock from my mom's stash. That's forest green that I dyed. This is a light gray I dyed. It's from these socks. I'm putting the next like squares are all from the, these socks. So you'll see some of these pop up. The burgundy is from those as well. This is the Exmoor sock. This is a skin that I dyed um, that I used for some toes of a sock. Anyway, I have so many. I'm also knitting a sea glass tee. There will be a video on my sea glass tee. If you've never heard of that, look it up right now. It's incredible. It's the a most amazing way to use your fingering weight scraps or sock weight scraps. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, it's a lot. This is a long video. It's like 40 minutes. So I hope you like socks and you stuck with me. If you don't like socks, that's okay. You can just skip this video. Although if you've watched all of this here at the end and all you've seen is socks, are socks. All you've seen are socks. So I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I love socks. I got really into it. Thank you to all my friends who said, ha 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 ha, you said you would never knit socks and now you knit socks all the time. I know, I'm a hypocrite. I'm not really a hypocrite. It's not like I'm saying 
Sock knitters suck and I'm a sock knitter. Anyway, now I knit socks all the time. Anyway, now it's like actually 40 minutes and this is getting ridiculous. So thank you for sticking with me and this has been Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Thanks for watching. See you next time.